Welcome everybody, my name is Olivier Sigaud. I am a professor in computer science at Sorbonne University in Paris, France. And you are watching a video about reinforcement learning and this is just the introduction. So this is in fact a class about reinforcement learning and in this first video I will just tell you why this video and what's the purpose of the class. So why are we interested at the moment in reinforcement learning? Reinforcement learning uh, is a hot topic at the moment in uh, machine learning research. There has been a lot of buzz recently about these deep reinforcement learning tools. Probably you have heard about the um, Atari games where uh, deep reinforcement learning technique uh, managed to play at a human level to several games without knowing anything about the games in the beginning and taking the game pictures as input. And most probably you have heard about AlphaGo, which is also a deep reinforcement learning system, which managed to defeat the best players in, at Go um, in the last years, whereas this problem was considered very difficult, let's say, less than 10 years ago. So this is, there is a lot of excitement at the moment in the community about deep reinforcement learning. Uh, another reason for being interested in reinforcement learning is computational neuroscience. In fact, the reinforcement learning framework is very relevant to understand how the brain learns to achieve some task by trial and error. And there is now a lot of literature trying to um, combine knowledge from reinforcement learning and knowledge from neuroscience to explain how all this works. Okay, and you have papers, for instance, which try to understand how the anatomy of the brain can be matched to different modules in a re reinforcement learning system, like an actor critic architecture. You will see what an actor critic architecture is later on. And there are also some recordings in the brain uh, of some quantities, like, such as uh, dopamine, uh, emitted by dopaminergic neurons, which seem to correspond to values that would be computed by uh, reinforcement learning algorithms. So there is a lot of literature about these relationships. Here you just have two examples, but there are many such papers uh, which connect together computational neuroscience and, and uh, reinforcement learning. Let me say that in this class, I won't speak anymore about computational neuroscience. I will more focus about the engineering side um, because this, these videos are um, uh, more oriented towards engineers. So what's the general purpose of these videos? So I, as I just said, you have machine learning tools, which are in particular reinforcement learning tools, which can be used for two domains, engineering applications, such as Go, Atari, etc., and computational neuroscience. In this class, I will focus on the machine learning level, okay? Um, I will try first to provide the general machine learning background that is necessary to understand the algorithms that are used in these domains. And I will do so by focusing more on the mechanisms and the on, on the engineering aspects rather than on the math. So in this class, you will have more videos than maths. And I, I will try to con explain the basic concepts, uh, starting in particular from the discrete reinforcement learning case, which is easier, rather than giving a lot of maths to, so that you understand the mechanism behind convergence of the reinforcement learning algorithms. And these um, uh, videos about the discrete case will be used to provide an introduction to the deep reinforcement learning algorithms where everything becomes continuous. First the state and then eventually the actions. And I will focus on continuous action domains in later videos. And finally, one of my purposes is, is to present the, big, the current big picture of research, in particular in continuous action deep reinforcement learning research. So this is a long way to start from the very basic and to end up with the current state of the art in uh, deep reinforcement learning with continuous actions. Let me say also that this class is related to labs that are available on lab. Okay, you can get these labs from this GitHub repository and uh, you are welcome to make the labs that will allow you to build again the videos that we'll see in this class by coding them and that just by coding you will better understand the concepts. That's the general idea behind this class. Uh, now let's go into what's reinforcement learning and this will be the end of this introduction. 
first a word to say that if you want to know more about this domain, you should read. And in particular, you should read this book. Let's say this is the Bible of the domain. This is the ultimate introduction to the field. In particular, that's a book that uh, dates back to uh, before that century. Okay. And at that time, most of reinforcement learning research was in the discrete case. But this book is really excellent. You can read it 10 times and discover new, new things each time. So it's quite important to have read it if you want to become an expert in the domain. Uh, let me say also that there is now a new edition that is available just uh, through internet and that will be uh, published soon by MIT Press. So you may purchase it. Okay. If you are a French-speaking student, you might be interested in this book. Actually, there are two books. Um, this was written by the French community um, about reinforcement learning in general. Okay, and we translated it uh, later on here. So that's uh, in 2010. You might be interested in that, but definitely what you should do is rather read this or the new edition. Definitely. Okay. Now, what's reinforcement learning? To better get what's reinforcement learning, I will try to explain the difference with respect to what is called supervised learning. So imagine you have an agent. This is this student, for instance, this poor student. And yeah, this agent has an environment. Here, the environment is the student supervisor. And the environment is asking the agent a question or setting a problem. The question is, did you get your project to work? to work and the agent must answer something okay and he may try different answers here the agent tries uh, no i didn't okay in the supervised learning context what the environment will do next is provide the correct answer to the to the agent okay so next time the agent knows what to do because he knows the correct answer immediately okay and this is supervised learning. With the correct answer, the agent can correct its model and provide the correct answer next time. This mechanism is typical of gradient backpropagation, re um, recursive least squares, and is applied in classification, regression, function approximation, etc. Et okay, regression and function approximation being the same thing. Okay, cost-sensitive learning is something different. You have exactly the same agent, the same environment, okay? But when the agent tries an action, answering no, for instance, what it gets is not the correct answer. He gets some evaluative signal. And here the evaluative signal is you won't go to Hawaii, okay? And of course, this is considered as a negative evaluative uh, signal. So the agent is not happy with that answer. So it should try something else, but it does not know what it should try. Okay, that's the difference. In the previous case, you know what to try next time because you, the correct answer was provided to you. Okay. In fact, reinforcement learning is very similar to that, but it mo it's more like this. You still have the same situation, but instead of some negative signal, you just, okay, that's a negative signal, but you get some scalar value. Okay. And then you have to figure out what's the meaning of this scalar value. Is minus 10 good or bad? Okay. To figure out whether minus 10 is good or bad, you have to try something else. And if you try something else and you get plus 20, probably minus 10 was very bad. But if you try something else and you get minus 100, probably minus 10 was not so bad. Okay. So if you just get a scalar value, you will have to try different things to figure out what was the best answer finally. And that's the key difference between supervised learning and reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, you need to explore, you need to try different things to figure out what's the correct answer. But there is a difficulty behind exploration. Actually, uh, if you already know what to do in some situations, you may decide either to use what you already know, this would be called exploitation, or you may try to do something else, maybe to get some better outcome. Okay? But exploring can be very harmful, as you see. Okay? So the dilemma of the agent is the following. Shall it exploit what it knows, or shall it look for a better policy? Okay? And at a point, the agent wants to become optimal. 
Probably the good idea will be to explore a lot in the beginning and to explore less and less until you find something that is very good and then you stick to what you found. Okay. So the good idea is probably to decrease the rate of exploration of a long time. But how fast should you, should you decrease this rate of exploration? If you decrease it too slowly, probably you will continue exploring whereas you have already found the optimal behavior. So it's not a good idea because you are wasting a lot of return just by exploring bad uh, answers, whereas you know the best uh, answer. Okay? And if you decrease the rate uh, of exploration too quickly, what will happen to you is probably that you will stop exploring before having found the optimal solution. So solving this exploration exploitation trade-off is very difficult. And as Sutton and Barto say in their book, a lot of reinforcement learning is science. This is just maths about uh, finding the optimal behavior in some setting. Okay. But dealing with the exploration exploitation is an art. This means that there is no um, definitive solution that is correct in any situation. You have to find the correct exploration way uh, depending on your problem. Okay. One simple way to perform exploration well, that will be useful for uh, several algorithm is called epsilon greedy. The idea is that you take the best action most of, most of the time and with a very low probability you take a random action from time to time. And many proofs of convergence of reinforcement learning algorithms are based on this mechanism because if you take random action from time to time you will explore everything over an infinite horizon and the exploring everything is necessary to find the optimal behavior in, the, in a mathematical sense. Okay, so that's the very introduction of reinforcement learning and then I will go into the maths in the next uh, videos. So just to give you an overview of uh, what we will do together, the next video will be about dynamic programming, that's the basics of the reinforcement learning setup. Okay, then I will explain to you model-free reinforcement learning so standard algorithms such as Q-learning, SARSA, actor critic, this kind of stuff. Okay. Then I will present to you some more advanced discrete reinforcement learning concepts that are necessary to understand deep reinforcement learning. And once we will get this background, I will switch to DQN, which is the basic um, deep reinforcement learning algorithm in the discrete action case, and then to DDPG, which is it, its counterpart in the continuous action case. And finally, I will give you an overview of other deep reinforcement learning research. If you have any question, um, don't hesitate to send me an email. That's my email address if you have a question about any of these videos.